The story of Noah's Ark, a foundational narrative in the biblical tradition, tells of a great flood sent by God to cleanse the world of its wickedness, sparing only Noah, his family, and pairs of every animal species preserved in a massive ark. This account, deeply ingrained in Judeo-Christian culture, is not unique. Remarkably similar flood stories are found in the lore of diverse ancient civilizations worldwide. From the Epic of Gilgamesh in Mesopotamia to the tales of Manu in Hindu mythology, these narratives share all the core elements, a cataclysmic flood, divine intervention, and the survival of a select few. This prevalence across distinct cultures raises intriguing questions about their origins and truths. Could these stories be disparate interpretations of a single, monumental historical event? This exploration aims to delve into the parallel flood narratives across civilizations, comparing them with the biblical account of Noah's Ark. By examining similarities and variances in these tales, alongside archaeological and historical evidence, the objective is to consider the possibility of these myths stemming from a real global flood event, a prospect that tantalizes historians, archaeologists, and theologians alike in the quest to unravel one of humanity's most enduring mysteries. The biblical narrative of Noah's Ark, as recounted in the book of Genesis, is a profound tale that intertwines themes of divine judgment, human morality, and redemption. Intriguingly, this story is prefaced by references to incredible beings such as the Watchers and the Nephilim Giants, adding layers of mystique and complexity to the already rich tapestry of the narrative. In the biblical context, the Watchers are often interpreted as fallen angels who descended to Earth and interacted with human beings. This interaction is said to have led to the birth of the Nephilim, a race of savage giants born from the union of the sons of God and the daughters of men. The presence of these beings is linked to the escalating sinfulness and corruption on earth, setting the stage for the divine intervention that follows. As the story unfolds, God observes the widespread wickedness and moral decay of humanity, exacerbated by the influence and actions of the Nephilim and the Watchers. Disturbed by this corruption, God decides to purge the earth with a catastrophic flood. Amidst this divine judgment, Noah stands as a beacon of righteousness. Chosen by God for his unwavering faith and moral integrity, Noah is instructed to build an ark, a massive vessel to preserve his family and pairs of every animal species. The construction of the ark by Noah in obedience to God's command, signifies mankind's potential for redemption and obedience. As the devastating floodwaters rise, engulfing the earth and eradicating all life, including the Nephilim, the ark floats as a solitary haven of survival and hope. This cataclysmic event marks not just a physical cleansing of the earth, but also a spiritual and moral reset for humanity. After the deluge subsides and the ark rests on the mountains of Ararat, Noah sends out birds to scout for dry land, representing the search for renewal and new beginnings. As we examine parallel flood myths in other civilizations, understanding these additional elements in the Noah's Ark story enriches our comparative analysis providing a deeper insight into the universal themes that resonate through various cultures and eras. We can start with the Sumerian civilization, one of the oldest and most influential civilizations in the world. The Sumerians present one of the most striking parallels to the biblical story of Noah's Ark through the Epic of Gilgamesh. This epic, recognized as the oldest known pieces of literature, includes a flood narrative that bears remarkable similarities to the biblical account. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the hero, Gilgamesh, encounters Utnapishtim, who recounts his experience of a great flood. Utnapishtim, akin to the biblical Noah, is warned by the god Ea, also known as Enki in some versions, 
of the god's decision to destroy humanity with a flood. Enki instructs Utnapishtim to build a boat, an ark of sorts, to survive this cataclysmic event. Heeding the divine warning, Utnapishtim builds a massive vessel, ensuring the survival of his family, craftsmen, and various species of animals. The narrative details the deluge, describing how the gods unleashed a terrifying storm that obliterated all life, a scene reminiscent of the biblical flood. After several days, the storm subsides, and Utnapishtim releases a dove, a swallow, and a raven to find land, mirroring Noah's release of the raven and dove in the Genesis account. Ultimately, the raven does not return, signaling that the waters have receded. Utnapishtim's story concludes with the gods granting him and his wife immortality as a reward for their obedience and piety, diverging from Noah's narrative but maintaining the theme of divine favor and reward. The epic of Gilgamesh's flood story not only parallels the biblical account in its essential elements, but also offers insights into the ancient Mesopotamian worldview. The similarities between the Sumerian flood myth and the biblical story of Noah's Ark suggest a shared cultural memory of a great flood in the ancient Near East. This narrative crossover highlights how different cultures grappled with and interpreted a potentially common historical or environmental event using it as a foundation for moral and existential lessons, and embedding it deeply into their religious and cultural consciousness. If we dive into the mesmerizing mythological stories of India, we can find another flood myth. The Hindu flood myth, featuring the figure of Manu, is another intriguing parallel to the biblical story of Noah's Ark. This narrative, Rooted in some of the most ancient texts in the world, texts like the Puranas and the Vedas presents countless themes of divine foresight, human responsibility, and the cyclical nature of creation and destruction. The story begins with Manu performing his morning rituals. He discovers a small fish in the water, which begs for his protection. Manu saves the fish, which is an avatar of the god Vishnu, and in return, the fish warns him of an impending catastrophic flood. Manu is instructed to build a massive boat to survive the upcoming deluge. This element of divine warning and subsequent preparation closely mirrors the biblical narrative where Noah is warned by God and builds an ark. In both stories, the central characters are chosen for their virtues and are entrusted with preserving life. As predicted, a devastating flood engulfs the world. Mainu, aboard his vessel, is tied to the horn of the fish, Vishnu, which guides him to safety. After the flood, Manu becomes responsible for creating a new world. He performs austerities and sacrifices, leading to the creation of a new human race. This aspect of renewal and repopulation parallels the biblical account where Noah and his family repopulate the earth post-flood. The story of Manu is deeply embedded in Hindu philosophy, illustrating the concepts of dharma, duty, karma, action, and the cyclical nature of the universe, creation, preservation, and destruction. Unlike the biblical narrative, which focuses on divine judgment and covenant, the Hindu myth places emphasis on the responsibilities of humans in maintaining cosmic order and harmony. Once again, we find a sophisticated ancient civilization that shares with the biblical flood story the themes of a world-engulfing deluge, the salvation of a chosen individual, and the genesis of a new era of humanity underscoring universal concerns about creation, destruction, and moral responsibility. If we go across the planet to the Mayan civilization, we find another incredible flood story. The Mayan civilization's flood myth, as narrated in the Popol Vuh, their sacred book, provides a captivating account that echoes many elements of the biblical flood story, while also displaying unique aspects reflective of Mayan beliefs and culture. 
The Popol Vuh recounts the story of a great flood sent by the gods as a means of destroying the wooden people, beings created by the gods who failed to worship them properly. In this narrative, the gods, disappointed with their creation, decide to start over, choosing a flood as the method of destruction. This aspect of divine punishment for failing to fulfill divine expectations parallels the biblical narrative where humanity's wickedness incurs God's wrath, leading to the flood. In both stories, the flood serves as a reset mechanism to cleanse the world and prepare for a new beginning. However, in the Mayan myth, the focus is more on the relationship between the creators and their creation, and the obligations of the latter towards the former. Unlike the story of Noah's Ark, where Noah and his family are chosen to survive and repopulate the earth, the Mayan narrative doesn't emphasize the survival of a righteous few. Instead, it focuses on the actions of the gods and the subsequent creation of a new, more satisfactory form of humans made from maize. The Popol Vuh offers insight into Mayan theology and cosmogony, where the creation and destruction of different types of beings are part of the gods' attempts to create a race capable of honoring them. The flood myth in the Popol Vuh is an essential component of this larger narrative of creation, destruction, and rebirth, reflecting the Mayan belief in the cyclical nature of life and the importance of a harmonious relationship between the divine and the human. The Mayan flood myth, while sharing the motif of a world-destroying flood with the biblical story, diverges in its emphasis on the relationship between creators and their creations, and the cycle of creation and destruction. It is a powerful testament to the Mayan understanding of the cosmos and their place within it, illustrating the rich tapestry of human mythology and the diverse ways in which different cultures have grappled with the concept of divine wrath, creation, and the role of humanity in the larger cosmic order. The Mayans are not the only American culture with a flood story. The Aztec civilization, one of the most prominent pre-Columbian cultures in Mesoamerica, has its own version of a flood myth, which holds intriguing similarities and differences with the biblical flood story of Noah's Ark. In Aztec mythology, the flood story is part of a larger narrative about the cycles of creation and destruction of the world. According to their beliefs, the world had been created and destroyed four times before, and the flood story belongs to the narrative of the fourth world, known as Nahui Atol, or Four Water. The god Tlaloc, who was the deity of rain and earthly fertility, is central to the Aztec flood myth. In this story, the gods decide to end the fourth world with a great flood. The reason for this destruction varies in different accounts, but it is often attributed to the anger of the gods towards the misdeeds of humanity or as part of the cyclical nature of creation and destruction in Aztec cosmology. In one version, a man named Tada and his wife Nana are forewarned about the impending flood by a god. In some accounts, this is the feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl. They are instructed to build a large boat or hollow a log to survive the flood. They bring with them various seeds and animals for the preservation of life. After the flood waters recede, Tada and Nana repopulate the earth, much like Noah and his family in the biblical account. In conclusion, while the Aztec flood myth shares fundamental elements with the biblical flood story, such as divine intervention, survival of a chosen few, and the subsequent renewal of life, it also offers a distinct perspective reflective of the Aztec cultural and spiritual worldview. In the northern parts of America, Native American cultures encompassing a wide range of tribes, each with their own rich traditions and beliefs, also have various flood myths that echo many elements of the biblical story of Noah's Ark, while also reflecting their unique spiritual and environmental perspectives. The flood myths across Native American tribes vary considerably, 
but they often share a theme of a great flood cleansing the earth. These stories typically involve a few survivors, either humans or animals, who repopulate and restore the world after the deluge. The causes and aftermath of the flood are depicted differently across tribes, reflecting the diversity of Native American cultural landscapes. In many Native American flood stories, the flood comes as a result of human misdeeds or a breakdown in the relationship between humans and the natural world. This aspect resonates with the biblical narrative, where the flood is a response to human wickedness. However, Native American stories also often emphasize the need for harmony with nature and respect for the spiritual world, concepts that are deeply ingrained in their cultures. Similar to Noah's survival in the Ark, many Native American flood myths include a character or a group that survives the flood, usually through divine intervention or guidance. This survival leads to a renewal of the earth and humanity, often with a renewed understanding of the importance of living in balance with nature and the spiritual realm. These flood myths are integral to the oral traditions of Native American tribes and serve multiple purposes. They are not just tales of destruction and survival, but are also moral lessons about respecting nature and understanding humanity's place within the larger cosmos. They often explain the origins of geographical features, cultural practices, or social structures. Native American flood myths, while sharing the fundamental concept of a world-engulfing flood with the biblical narrative, offer a distinctive perspective that interweaves the natural, human, and spiritual realms. These stories highlight the diversity of interpretations of the flood myth across cultures, underscoring the universal human endeavor to find meaning and lessons in natural cataclysms and to maintain a harmonious relationship with the world. Leaving America and heading to Africa, we found that the African cultures, known for their rich oral traditions and diverse mythologies, encompass a variety of flood myths that, while distinct in their storytelling, share thematic elements with the biblical story of Noah's Ark. The African continent, with its vast array of cultures and languages, offers several interpretations of flood myths. From the Oromo people of Ethiopia to the Yoruba of Nigeria, flood narratives often serve as foundational myths that explain the origins of the earth, humanity, and societal structures. In many African flood myths, the deluge is a significant event that leads to either the destruction of a previous world or the creation of a new one. Similar to the biblical account, these stories often involve a chosen individual or family who survives the catastrophe, tasked with repopulating and rebuilding the world. The flood serves as a mechanism for cleansing, renewal, and the establishment of a new moral order. African flood myths commonly incorporate elements of divine judgment or intervention, where the flood is a response to human actions or a part of the divine plan. The survivors are typically portrayed as righteous or favored individuals, echoing the biblical Noah's righteousness and divine selection. In African cultures, these myths are more than just tales of survival and renewal. They often carry deep spiritual and moral significance. They are used to impart lessons about living in harmony with nature, respecting ancestral wisdom, and understanding the interplay between the human, natural, and spiritual worlds. Like the Africans, the Polynesian cultures, spanning a vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean with numerous islands and unique traditions, have their own versions of flood myths. These stories, while varied across the different island cultures, often share fundamental similarities with the biblical story of Noah's Ark and highlight unique aspects of Polynesian beliefs and environmental experiences. In Polynesian mythology, flood stories are not uncommon and are found in various forms across the region, from Hawaii to New Zealand. These narratives often involve a great deluge that reshapes the landscape and, in some versions, 
serves as a pivotal event in the creation or transformation of the world. Similar to the story of Noah and all the other flood stories we discussed, many Polynesian flood myths involve a cataclysmic flood that is survived by a select few, often with divine assistance or guidance. For instance, in Maori mythology, the hero Tawaki is said to climb to the heavens to ask for the deluge to cease, saving the world from complete destruction. In other tales, specific ancestors or demigods manage to survive the flood, ensuring the continuation of life and the human race. These flood myths reflect the Polynesians' deep connection with the sea and their understanding of the natural forces that shape their island environments. The stories often serve as explanations for natural phenomena, the origins of certain islands or the ancestral lineage of tribes. While Polynesian flood myths vary in detail and emphasis, they commonly convey moral and spiritual lessons. These can include themes of respect for nature, the importance of harmony between humans and the gods, and the value of resilience and adaptability in the face of environmental challenges. Polynesian flood myths, embodying the essence of islander storytelling and belief systems, share the overarching theme of a great deluge with the biblical narrative. However, they are distinct in their focus on island geography, ancestral heroism, and the intricate relationship between humans and the natural world. These narratives not only offer insights into Polynesian culture and spirituality, but also contribute to the diverse global mosaic of flood myths, each reflecting the unique perspectives and experiences of their respective cultures. Venturing to China, their mythology of the Great Flood of Gunyu presents another unique narrative that, while differing in details, also shares thematic elements with the other flood stories around the world. This myth, deeply entrenched in Chinese cultural and historical consciousness, offers a perspective on leadership, human ingenuity, and the harmony between humanity and nature. The Great Flood of Gunyu is a legendary saga that spans generations, detailing the efforts of heroes, Gun and his son Yu, to control a devastating flood that lasts for decades. This narrative differs from the biblical account and other flood myths by focusing more on flood control efforts rather than a singular catastrophic event followed by rebirth. Initially, Gun, a minister in the court of the mythical emperor Yao, attempts to stop the flooding using a patchwork of barriers, but his efforts fail. His son, Yu, takes over and adopts a different approach. Yu's strategy involves dredging, creating channels to divert floodwaters and ultimately leading to the taming of the waters. His success in flood control and land reclamation earns him legendary status and marks the beginning of the Shia dynasty. Unlike the biblical flood, which is an act of divine retribution, the great flood of Gunyu does not stem from divine punishment, but rather is seen as a natural disaster. The story emphasizes the virtues of wisdom, perseverance, and leadership. Yu's intelligent and methodical approach to solving the crisis is celebrated, symbolizing the importance of human effort and wisdom in overcoming great challenges. This myth holds a significant place in Chinese history and culture. It not only serves as a founding myth of Chinese civilization, but also illustrates the harmonious coexistence and struggle with nature, a recurring theme in Chinese philosophy and culture. The narrative underscores the Confucian ideals of wise leadership and moral rectitude, with Yu being portrayed as a model ruler who puts the welfare of the people and the harmony with nature above all else. In conclusion, the Great Flood of Gunyu, while distinct in its portrayal of a prolonged natural calamity and the emphasis on human ingenuity and leadership, shares with the biblical flood story and other global myths the theme of a great deluge.
It highlights humanity's resilience and the capacity for innovation in the face of overwhelming natural disasters, reflecting a universal human experience of grappling with and overcoming nature's formidable challenges. In Europe, the Greek myth of Deucalion and Pyrrha presents another interesting flood narrative. In Greek mythology, Deucalion was the son of Prometheus, the titan known for his foresight. Forewarned by his father about a forthcoming deluge intended by Zeus to cleanse the world of its corrupt and hubristic inhabitants, Deucalion builds a giant chest. Accompanied by his wife, Pyrrha, Deucalion survives the catastrophic flood that ensues. The flood in this myth is initiated by Zeus, the king of the Greek gods, as a response to the moral degeneration of humanity. Here, once again, we find a narrative about a cataclysmic flood used as a divine tool for purging the earth of its corruption. Like Noah, Deucalion is portrayed as a righteous individual. His survival, along with his wife's, is a testament to their purity and moral integrity. Their willingness to heed divine warning and prepare accordingly underlines the virtues of obedience and respect for the divine, themes that are central to all cultures we mentioned. Post-flood, Deucalion and Pyrrha play a crucial role in repopulating the earth. At the behest of the Oracle of Themis, they throw stones over their shoulders, which miraculously transform into men and women, symbolizing the renewal of human life. This act of repopulation draws a parallel to Noah's role in re-establishing life on Earth after the floodwaters recede. The story of Deucalion and Pyrrha is deeply embedded in Greek culture, symbolizing the cyclical nature of life and the enduring human spirit in the face of divine or natural catastrophes. It reflects the Greek understanding of the gods as powerful, yet intimately involved in the affairs of humanity, a concept that shapes much of Greek mythology. Like the story of Noah, this myth underscores the potential for new beginnings and hope after a period of destruction and despair. The ancient Greeks are not the only Europeans with flood stories, though. The Norse mythology, rich in its pantheon of gods, giants, and cosmic events, presents its own version of a flood myth with the story of Bergelmir. This tale, though less known than some of its global counterparts, carries intriguing parallels to the biblical story of Noah's Ark, as well as distinct elements that highlight the unique aspects of Norse mythology. According to the ancient Norse beliefs, Bergelmir is a primeval being, a giant who becomes the progenitor of a new race of giants after surviving a great flood. This deluge, unlike many other flood myths, is not caused by divine retribution, but is a result of the cosmic conflict between the giants, Jotun, and the gods, Aesir. According to the myth, the blood of the slain giant Emir, the forebear of all giants, floods the world, drowning all but Bergelmir and his wife. Bergelmir and his wife survive by seeking refuge in a hollowed-out tree trunk, floating on the vast waters until they can begin life anew. This element of a soul couple surviving a catastrophic flood is reminiscent of Noah and his family's survival in the biblical account. The story of Bergelmir is significant in Norse mythology as it explains the origins of the race of giants, a constant presence in Norse tales. This myth, set in the context of the broader narrative of the Norse cosmos, reflects the tumultuous and often violent interactions between different cosmic forces and beings. While the Norse flood myth shares the fundamental motif of a great deluge with the story of Noah's Ark, it diverges in its focus on the world of gods and giants rather than humanity. The story of Bergelmir underscores the Norse cultural emphasis on the interconnectedness of all cosmic entities and the ongoing cycle of creation, destruction, and renewal. It adds to the rich mosaic of global flood myths, each reflecting the unique spiritual, 
cultural, and environmental concerns of their respective civilizations. There are many more flood stories we won't be able to share in this video. For example, there are Finnish, Slavic, Japanese, and many other flood stories out there. The question is, what stands behind the origin of all these stories? The theory that a global flood really happened, and that this is the common origin for the myriad of flood stories found across different ancient civilizations, including the biblical flood, is a subject of considerable interest and debate. This theory posits that these flood myths are not merely coincidental or the product of independent cultural imaginations, but rather they stem from a collective memory of a real historical event that significantly impacted human societies globally. From a scientific standpoint, proponents of the global flood theory often refer to geological evidence that suggests massive flood events in Earth's history. For instance, the end of the last ice age about 10,000 years ago saw significant glacial melting, leading to rising sea levels. This could have caused widespread flooding, especially in low-lying coastal areas where early human civilizations were likely situated. Evidence of sudden and catastrophic flooding has been identified in various locations, such as the Black Sea Deluge Hypothesis, which posits that a massive influx of water from the Mediterranean Sea into the Black Sea occurred around 7,600 years ago. In conclusion, the question of whether a singular Great Flood happened as a real event in human history remains a subject of considerable debate and speculation. The ubiquity of flood myths across diverse cultures on every continent is indeed striking and raises compelling questions about their origin. How is it possible that societies separated by vast oceans and uninfluenced by each other's mythologies have come up with such similar stories? Could this commonality point to a shared, ancient experience of a cataclysmic flood? These stories from the epic of Gilgamesh to the biblical account of Noah's Ark, and from Native American to Polynesian myths, despite their regional variations, share core elements of a massive deluge, divine intervention or anger, and the survival of a select few. As we ponder the origins of these flood myths, we must ask ourselves further questions. What does the presence of these myths tell us about human nature and our relationship with the natural world? How have these stories influenced our understanding of history, geography, and cultural development? And most intriguingly, if there was a great flood, what might have been its causes and consequences on the trajectory of human civilization? Thank you for watching. Tell us your theories in the comments below. And if you want to learn the potential cause of the massive floods that affected our entire planet, we suggest you watch our video on the Silurian Hypothesis, a fascinating theory that believes the poles of our planet shift periodically, causing massive cataclysms worldwide. See you on the next video.